Silva looking in for Irving. Irving for the win! Oh, this is the Dallas Mavericks' second option. And the reason that he's the second option is because of plays like this. In their last 15 games, the Dallas Mavericks have won 13, including statement wins against the Denver Nuggets and the surging Houston Rockets, who were winners of 11 straight themselves. The Rockets should have known that an almighty beatdown was coming if Luka was making shots like this in the pregame. Luka actually made a shot even better than this during the game, where Jabari Smith Jr. played 23 seconds of good defense, but then Luka connected on a seemingly implausible scoop shot to beat the buzzer. For many players, this would be their career best highlight, but Luka had better moments even in this game. On this play, he made a bank shot, then turned to gave a nod as if to say he meant to do it. Then he banks in another from the same spot just to prove he meant the first one. These are NBA players that Luka is toying with, as his level of skill is virtually unmatched in the NBA right now. Maybe even good enough to beat the Denver Nuggets, which we will get into later. Not only have the Mavericks been playing good basketball, but in the front office, they've also been making great moves, dominating the trade deadline, picking up players in positions of need, such as PJ Washington and Daniel Gafford. Although the rookie sensation Derek Lively had been giving them solid minutes in the starting lineup. Trading for some vets with more experience to start has helped them tremendously. The athleticism between Gafford and Lively especially has made the backcourt tandem of Luka and Kyrie impossible to stop. Before when Luka had Dwight Powell and JaVale McGee, he wasn't able to create these lob plays, making him pretty one-dimensional when driving to the basket. But now with the otherworldly athleticism that Gafford and Lively provide, paired with the elite passing of Luka and Kyrie, the Mavericks have successfully created the most unstoppable series of plays in the NBA right now. Now when Luka drives to the basket, he has three options. The first option is to score, either by beating his defender to the basket or using a series of pump fakes, mid-range jumpers and floaters to score. The second option is the standard kick out pass to a shooter when he's getting doubled. And now the third option, throw the ball up literally anywhere on the air and someone's going to throw it down. In a game against the San Antonio Spurs, Luka was making absolutely ridiculous passes play after play, putting guys on posters and even throwing an alley-oop full court. Since the trade deadline, the Mavericks have all of a sudden become a fast and athletic team. And on the defensive side of the ball, they have become much better, which is something that we'll also get into later. Before the changes, the Mavs starting lineup featured Luka, Kyrie, Derek Jones Jr., Grant Williams, and Derek Lively. With this lineup, the Mavericks defense was horrible, but the offense was good, winning 60% of their games together. But in the Western Conference, that simply wasn't good enough. Then, fast forward to now with a new and improved lineup of Luka, Kyrie, Jones Jr., PJ Washington, and Daniel Gafford, who have been winning 92% of their games together, a staggering level of dominance for a brand new team. PJ Washington in particular has boosted the Mavericks defense. As one-on-one -on -one out on the perimeter, in the paint and in the post-up defense, he has been elite, being able to slide his feet well for his size and averaging a steal on the block per game. With Denver, the defense of Aaron Gordon at the four spot helped them win a title, and the Mavericks have found their guy to play a similar role that Gordon did. Then Daniel Gafford is an elite shot blocker, averaging two blocks per game, and just providing a better defensive presence around the basket than McGee and Powell. Could. In their last 10 games, the Mavericks have transformed their team, having a defensive rating of 104.4, which is an elite number, easily putting them in the top five in the league. And when you consider just how good offensively this Mavs team is, winning the Western Conference is definitely not out of the picture for the Dallas Mavericks. Dallas could really win the Western Conference, and let me show you why. In the first round, the matchup is likely already set in stone with the Clippers, a rematch from the 2020 playoffs and the 2021 playoffs. In the bubble series, Luka torched the Clippers, averaging 31 points per game on 50% shooting, including a stunning game winner in game four. However, the Clippers would still win in six games. In the series in 2021, Luka got even better, averaging 2K numbers, putting up 35 points a night on an effective 49% shooting from the field and a staggering 40% from three, along with 10 assists per game. However, the Mavericks would yet again lose, this time in seven games. With Luka improving his performance every time against the Clippers, he could damn near average 40 points per game in the series. And with the added help, I'll take the Mavericks in seven games. But then the same question question everyone
every Western Conference contender is asking themselves. Can they stop Nikola Jokic and the Denver Nuggets? Dallas have solid defenders now and can play elite team defense. As the defensive tandem of Gafford, Washington and Lively would be tasked with defending the Joker. In games past, we have seen Denver struggle, especially when they don't have Jamal Murray, who has been dealing with a lower leg injury, which has continued to linger throughout the course of the season. As Denver is still unsure if they're going to be able to get him fully healthy for a full postseason run or not. Even if Murray is healthy, I still think the Mavericks have a real shot to knock off the defending champions, and I'll tell you why. First, the best way to defend the Kola Jokic is to make him score the basketball. The Mavericks will need to stay home on perimeter shooters and not commit double teams to Jokic. As PJ and Gafford aren't going to be able to stop the Joker from scoring, but they are going to use up his energy. Make Nikola Jokic beat you by himself. If Denver can't get the perimeter shooters going, they have to solely rely on Jokic scoring the basketball. And if the Mavericks can successfully set up this scenario, they have a real shot at winning the series. Not only do I think the series between the Dallas Mavericks and the Denver Nuggets could go either way, I also believe that this could be one of the greatest series in NBA history, as Jokic versus Luka would be a spectacle. In other series the Mavericks would have to face, I believe they honestly should be the favorites in any other series. Against the Timberwolves, the backcourt of Luka and Kyrie would certainly be a test for the Timberwolves defense, but Minnesota have been an elite defensive team all season, making for a super tight series between the two. But I believe that the experience that Luka has had in the postseason, along with Kyrie Irving, will be enough to get them over the line. Then in another series against the OKC Thunder, I believe it will yet again be experience that's going to be the difference, as the Thunder haven't even made it to a postseason before. I believe that the real tests will come against the Nuggets, Timberwolves, Clippers, and Lakers, who have been on a roll at the end of the regular season, as the duo of LeBron James and Anthony Davis should never be counted out in a postseason series. If the Mavericks are to make it to the NBA Finals, the Boston Celtics will be an incredibly hard test. PJ Washington would likely be matched up on Jason Tatum, and the defensive backcourt of White and Holiday would be perfect matchups for Luka and Kyrie, making this a very hard series for the Dallas Mavericks to win. Do you think the Dallas Mavericks have what it takes to win the Western Conference? And if so, could they beat the Boston Celtics? Let me know in the comments below.